Visualize a bridge that stretches 2.2 miles across the water with a projected cost of 12 billion euros, joining two locations that have been isolated for millennia. A bridge that would be the world's longest and highest suspension bridge, exceeding the engineering feats of Turkey, China and the United States. A bridge that would cost billions of euros, create thousands of jobs and stimulate the southern Italian economy. A bridge that would realize the dreams of numerous politicians, engineers and civilians. This is the Strait of Messina Bridge, a project that has been proposed, planned and postponed for decades. But why hasn't it been built yet? What are the obstacles and controversies that surround this ambitious endeavour? And is it really worth it? The concept of constructing a bridge spanning the Strait of Messina, the relatively narrow body of water that separates the beautiful island of Sicily from mainland Italy, has been present for centuries. This notion can be traced all the way back to ancient times, when the renowned Greek poet Homer vividly portrayed the perilous nature of this passage. In his epic tale, he recounted the fabled creatures Scylla and Charybdis, whose malevolent presence in the depths of the water posed a significant threat to seafarers. These mythical monsters instilled fear and trepidation in the hearts of sailors, further emphasizing the dangers associated with crossing this strait. Thus, the idea of bridging the Strait of Messina garnered attention, albeit for different reasons than today. The Romans also considered the possibility of a bridge, but they opted for a fleet of ships instead to transport their troops and supplies during their conquest of Sicily. During the Middle Ages, the Strait of Messina became a strategic point for trade and warfare, as different powers fought for control over the island and mainland. The Normans, the Byzantines, the Arabs, the Angevins, the Aragonese and the Spanish all left their mark on the history and culture of the region. In the 19th century, the unification of Italy brought about a profound transformation, instilling a renewed sense of national identity and coherence within its citizens. However, accompanying this unification was the pressing challenge of integrating the southern and northern regions of the country, ultimately aiming to alleviate the profound economic and social disparities that existed between them. Consequently, the idea of envisaging a symbolic bridge as a tangible representation of unity and progress was resurrected. Nevertheless, as comprehensive discussions unfolded, this notion was swiftly disregarded due to its exorbitant cost and impracticality, leading to the exploration of other avenues that could effectively address the existing disparities in a more feasible and sustainable manner. In the 20th century, the bridge project was revived several times by different governments and leaders, from Mussolini to Berlusconi. Each time, the project faced opposition from various groups and factors, such as environmentalists, geologists, engineers, economists, politicians, and the mafia. In the 21st century, the bridge project is still alive, but not without controversy. The current government, led by Giorgio Maloney, has approved a decree to restart the planning and construction of the bridge, claiming that it will create jobs, boost tourism, and improve the infrastructure of the South. But is this true? And what are the risks and challenges involved? Building a bridge across the Strait of Messina is not an easy task. The strait is 3.3 kilometers wide at its narrowest point and up to 200 meters deep. It is also subject to strong currents, winds and tides that create waves and whirlpools. Moreover, the strait is located in a seismic zone where earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are frequent and unpredictable. In 1908, a devastating earthquake and tsunami killed over 100,000 people in Messina and Reggio Calabria and destroyed most of the buildings in both cities. To overcome these challenges, the bridge design has to be extremely robust and flexible, able to withstand the forces of nature and the weight of traffic. The bridge would be a suspension bridge with two massive pylons, 382 meters high, supporting a single span of 3,300 meters, the longest in the world. 
The bridge deck would have six lanes for cars, two lanes for trains, and two emergency lanes. The bridge would also have a sophisticated system of sensors, dampers, and actuators to monitor and adjust the tension and vibration of the cables and the deck. The construction process would be complex and lengthy, requiring advanced technology and skilled workers. The bridge would be built in sections, on land or on floating platforms, and then transported and assembled on site using cranes, barges, and helicopters. The construction would also have to deal with the environmental impact, such as noise, pollution, and disruption of the marine life and the bird migration. The cost and benefits of the bridge are also a matter of debate. The government estimates that the bridge would cost 6.1 billion euros and that it would generate 18.6 billion euros in economic returns over a period of 30 years. The government also claims that the bridge would create 100,000 jobs during the construction and 50,000 jobs after the completion and that it would increase tourism, trade and the mobility of the region. However, many critics and opponents vociferously question these numbers and passionately argue that the proposed bridge is not only a colossal waste of money, time and resources, but also a blight on the region's potential progress. They assert that these significant funds should instead be diverted towards pressing projects and priorities that would truly benefit the community at large. These informed critics highlight several concerns, primarily focusing on the environment, cultural and security repercussions that would inevitably arise from the construction of such a bridge. They assert that this infrastructure undertaking would have detrimental effects on the delicate balance of the local ecosystem, irreparably detaching the region from its rich cultural heritage and potentially compromising the security of the area. These critics firmly assert that the primary beneficiaries would be a select few, namely the powerful construction companies, self-serving political parties, and even criminal organizations such as the Mafia. By meticulously weighing the pros and cons, it becomes abundantly clear that the generalized well-being and long-term interests of the region far outweigh any potential benefits the proposed bridge may offer. Some of the alternatives and solutions proposed by the critics and opponents include improving the existing transport system, such as the ferries, the trains and the highways, or developing new technologies, such as tunnels, submersibles or hyperloops. They also suggest investing in the education, health and welfare of the people, promoting the culture and natural heritage of the region. The future of the much-anticipated, highly debated Strait of Messina Bridge remains hidden in uncertainty. Although the project has received the green light from the government, its progress is hindered by an array of legal, technical and social obstacles that have the potential to significantly delay or even halt its completion. Moreover, the realization of this ambitious infrastructural endeavor is involvedly intertwined with the overall political and economic landscape of the country, which is significantly impacted by a slew of factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic, the ever-evolving dynamics within the European Union, and the volatile nature of the global market. These external forces can exert either positive or negative pressure on the bridge project, further complicating its trajectory and ultimate fate. Thus, until these multifaceted challenges are effectively addressed and resolved, the viability and ultimate fruition of the Strait of Messina Bridge will continue to hang in the balance. The bridge, significantly portraying the dreams and anxieties shared by the residents of Sicily and Calabria, as well as Italians at large, serves as a manifestation of the region's historical journey and cultural heritage. Moreover, it encapsulates the challenges and opportunities that shape the present and future trajectory of these areas. Delving deeper into its significance, this bridge poses questions related to vision and values, as well as the yardstick that measures costs and benefits, risks and rewards. These questions, though complex, lack an easily obtainable or definitive solution standing as a testament to the multifaceted nature of this ongoing inquiry. What do you think? Do you support or oppose the bridge project? Why? 
What are the pros and cons of building a bridge across the Strait of Messina? What are the alternatives and solutions that you would propose? Let us know in the comments